Welcome to uh, ECGR, ah, what the heck, Introduction to Robotics, lecture number 10. By the way, if you've noticed, uh, how many of you have actually seen lecture 8 and 9 already online? Wow. I already have like 20 views of both of those uh, videos and I've put them up uh, Saturday or Sunday or, I don't know, maybe even Friday. So I guess it was other people looking at it on the web. Ooh, yay, <laughs> web. All right, so um, looking at quiz number five that we just gave, so I'll do a solution for this. The, uh, the problem is very similar to what we've done. Uh, robot in lab number two. Again, we're rotating in place. The distance between the center and the wheel itself is 14 centimeters, 28 centimeters diameter. So as our vehicle turns counterclockwise, we already have uh, discussed this, and the wheel itself is turning clockwise both directions, or both wheels are turning clockwise. As I said, as looking at each wheel from the outside. So as looking at the wheel from here, and as looking at the wheel from here. How far is the vehicle is the uh, vehicle actually turning from this point forward? Don't forget we are uh, one quarter turn. So it's going to be equal to one quarter times d times pi. In this case, d is twenty-eight. So it is 7 pi. Agree? Centimeter. So that's a distance traveling. So we have our distance 7 pi centimeters. And we know that we have a wheel and the wheel is well, it's uh, pi d centimeters is equal to one wheel revolution and this is where d is equal to what? alright so in other words pi 7 Multiply by one wheel, revolution is equal to 53 motor revs. All of this is equal to, as uh, is apparently obvious, 7 pi cancels out, and we're left with, oh, and of course we cancel out centimeters, centimeters, wheel revolutions, wheel revolutions, we're left with 53 Motor revs. Sorry, I made it easy. Will you forgive me? Yes. Should I make it this easy on the test? Yes. Yeah, I'm sure you all will like that. Uh, so, I will uh, put this in the bucket for grading. I would like to cover one topic first. Oh, what the heck, let's just cover. Exam one. What will be on the exam? So I can assure you, one, that there will be some sort of requirements. where you decompose a problem using systems engineering
concepts, concepts. So it could be anything from make requirements to do the uh, work breakdown structure or the, the basic, basic uh, decompos decomposition structure of your device. <coughs> so it could be anything along that line. We've already seen examples of uh, um, requirements, or I should say structure, not just requirements. So you've seen everything from how do you do requirements, <laughs> so you have to know what requirements language are, is, and how do you divide and conquer, and how do you organize, decompose. Any questions on those concepts? So would that be like, see if you split on the one mechanical electrical, you will like certain for each certain number? I will, that will probably be part of the problem. The question was, you know, does that mean you'll tell us how many of each? And the whole idea, I'll tell you, it may be just the control system. It may be just, assume you have this vehicle to start with. Decompose the control system for this problem. You never know when you might see something like a block diagram required. Where you have to identify some block diagram for a system and make sure you have all the parts, all the specific wires that need to go between all those different parts. What else have we seen? We have seen general concepts of robotics. For example, uh, we've looked at uh, Isaac Asimov, Robotics and Literature. You've seen examples, for example, videos. You've seen concepts of technologies. For example, you've seen lots of three-minute presentations from everybody. Or some other just general aspects uh, that we've seen over the, over the time. Did you put that PowerPoint up there? Pardon me? Did you put the, that PowerPoint with the three-minute presentations of all the Moodle? I've put the PowerPoint and you should have access to the videos as well. Yeah, the videos are up there, I've seen them. Okay. And then four, we've seen calculations. Used in robotics. And the one we've seen so far is wheels. And we'll see uh, a lot more with respect to encoders as well. One thing you will not see is uh, law of cosines. Um, the ultrasound. Oh, I should put in here general concepts. This will include also uh, uh, code specifically for Sakura. Do you mean uh, by the block diagram, the part where it, that PDF that was on Moodle that we took a look at before? It could be anything. It could be something like um, 
how do you hook up uh, a microcontroller to different sensors. You've already seen an example of it with your digital robot, right? Robot. Robot. Uh, no. Your digital robot, where you see what control lines go from here to there. Or maybe on the motor you have a optical encoder, and how does that information get passed back, which is actually the subject of today. <coughs> Question there? I was going to, are we expected to know the number of communication lines? Don't forget this is an open book, open note. Uh, don't forget. You will be allowed to use PCs, but only PDF reader. Still haven't figured out if I'm going to have you do type requirements online. I'm now thinking that may not be a good idea. Kind of hard to keep track of that unless, uh, well, I'll have to make sure that uh, um, RTA is here as well. Any other questions? Any, anything is open, by the way. Lab, uh, lab zero through lab three. Yes? Is this going to be online by today? Or? I'll try and get it there today. Okay. Or should I require you to take good notes so you can have access to all this? Is that good that I uh, put it online? Yeah. yeah. All right, because otherwise, do you actually listen in class? I'm just wondering. <laughs> Any other questions about the exam? So those of you who have my embedded class, Exams are just absolutely simple, right? Yeah. I like this. Uh, Bancy, did you say yes? Uh, no. <laughs> no, you didn't say yes, or no, they're not easy. I, I don't remember. You don't remember? <laughs> has, has it been such a blur? Yeah. I believe you also had two classes from me, haven't you? Yeah. Man, they must have been really tough if you can't remember either class, huh? Uh, my averages are anywhere between 70 and 85, depending on the class and the material covered. Um, yeah, they're not all that hard. How many questions? Lots. There's lots of questions. How much time do you get? That's a good question. How much time should you have? Well, so lots and lots of questions. Well, lots and lots of time. So if I give you the whole class time, I have to increase the number of questions. Wrong. Or I could just give you 75 minutes, and then you spend the rest of the time working on lab exercises. Sure. Like that. Mm -hmm. 30 minutes. 30, oh, so you like 30 minutes instead, huh? Uh, yeah, that's silly. Silly wabbit. The longer I make the test, the longer it takes for me to write it and to grade it. So it's to my advantage to make it more 30 minutes than 75. I don't think I'm going to do it 30 minutes, though. Now, we have discussed before whether we have this available for you to do uh, as a team or not. You still game for that? Yeah. All right, so the, it will be organized as such. There will be a... A, uh, a part of it that is um, scratch. So I will probably have something like 10, maybe 15 questions that you could do as a group between pairs. And if I remember, I've got a uh, video of it. Everybody voted yes except for, uh, except for my lone, lone wolf over here. <laughs> Who's going to do it alone? True story. Are you okay with that? Yeah, that sounds good. Are you really okay with that? Yeah, do I get a curve? No. <laughs> that sounds like a bad choice. Though. Okay, it does, doesn't it? Uh, so you will have a short amount of time. Then I will have a group design. And you'll have a short amount of time for that. 
and then we'll collect the papers, and then you'll have an individual. What is the group design again? It will most likely do something associated with your requirements. Group design of two. Group design of two. Groups of two. So uh, I think there's a couple people not here today, are there? Correct. I think uh, who's who's lab partner's not here? Is he? Uh, he's sick today. He, he right. texts him. He's on his way. He's on his way <laughs> and missing in action. Oh, somebody else's. Mr. Uh, Rex? Huh? Okay. Me? Oh, that's you. Sorry. Sorry. For some reason, I brain fart. Never mind. Oh, that was on tape too, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, and then individual part. And so I can pretty much uh, assure you that there will be a couple of uh, questions associated with calculations that will be done individually. And uh, I can assure you that there will be some general concepts that you'll need to do individually. Open book, open note, doesn't mean open neighbor, except for the group part. Right? <laughs> Any questions? Any more questions on the exam? Can you go? Can you move the sheet? Up? Let's see a lot. All right, off we go. The concept I want to cover today is wheel encoders. So let's set the stage and see what you think. We've already talked about how many rotations a motor will make for one revolution of the wheel. So here's a question. You have a motor with a spindle attached to a wheel. Is it better to record here? Or here. record a number of revolutions here. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference? If the motor to wheel is 53 to 1, which is better? Using the uh, Hall effect sensor? Well, the assumption here is that you have a Hall effect sensor. That's a good example. But you could use something else. If you're going to measure it on the motor side, you'll get, if you measure one revolution of each one, you're going to measure it 53 times if you measure on the motor. For one revolution of the wheel. So I guess the first thing you say is, what resolution? That's an awfully big wheel, isn't it? So if you only worry about each single wheel revolution once, yeah, it would be better to, uh, to measure over here where there's 53, if you only measure here once. But what if you do something else? What if you have some sort of situation over here where you have a, an LED that's looking at this? So in this case, you have an LED and sensor. And what you actually see on the wheel are concentric dark and white lines. And assume that they go all the way around. In this situation. 
situation. If you get more than 53 lines, it's better on the wheel than on the motor. All right. So the design decision you have to make is, oh, this sounds like a really good test question. Where? Motor versus wheel. Resolution. But it also has to do with the actual signal that you're looking at. Very often, if you do an LED here that is reflective versus non-reflective, you're going to get what? <clears throat> well, if we say that this is going to be a mostly a digital signal, Digital signal will give you what? More or less, depending on if a white is, uh, if you're going a transition from a white space on this encoder to a black space on that encoder. Or if you are uh, going from black to white, which is rising, which is falling. The alternative to this is going to be an analog where we'll look closer to this, right? Which looks remarkably like a sine wave or a, a what? Sawtooth wave. Well, it's basically looking like sawtooth, but for that matter, it's even getting really close to this, isn't it? So inside your computer, you have to determine if you're going to make this a, uh, a digital or an analog signal. <clears throat> Can you do both at the same time? You can take an analog one and use a comparator to turn it into a digital signal. Just determine when time and when it's low. All right, you can use a comparator. What's even easier than that? set some bounds and say above this is one. Okay. You can set bounds. Or perhaps you could use pull up and pull down resistors. <coughs> Depending on how you do your circuit. So there's several aspects when we're talking about uh, electrical design for this mechanical phenomenon. So, I will leave it to you for a problem, and I want you to think about this before I answer it. And here's a wheel. And in the design of my wheel, I'm going to have four dark and four <coughs> white regions. So that means my wheel encoder is set up like this. Oh, look at that. And typically what you'll see you have an equal amount of white versus dark space because that gives you a better quote unquote duty cycle. Which, oh, by the way, duty cycle, I think we've already covered in class, haven't we? Was that yes? No? All right, duty cycle means it is one half up, one half down. So if we have, again, our, our optical encoding LED and detector looking at this 
So we have four dark, four light regions. If you see exactly 20 rising edges, of the pulse. How far have you traveled? So this is, uh, we're going to say it's on the wheel, so this is a wheel encoder. And we're going to say that the wheel is equal to uh, 10 centimeters in diameter. All right. So right now, I would like for you and uh, the person next to you to uh, take a look at this and see if you know how to set up the problem. Hopefully, we've done enough of this. And then uh, we'll have one of your groups report this to me. All right, I just apparently shocked a lot of people by uh, shouting out the word wrong. And, and in this world of uh, everybody getting a soccer trophy for, uh, for participation, I thought I should explain myself, right? All right, so... For those of uh, for those of you out in the outside world and in in, uh, in other countries, uh, it's a it's a really American joke. So we'll, uh, we'll just leave it at that. I'm sorry, Susie. Did I really get you upset by saying that? Even though I didn't listen for your answer. <laughs> All right. So let's see what you might have said. Right? You said 20 pulses. And we know that four pulses equals one wheel revolution, right? And we know that one wheel revolution is going to be equal to pi 10 centimeters, correct? <laughs> So that's equal to 50 pi centimeters or 157 centimeters. And if you said that, you may be right, but it's extremely likely you're wrong. Why is that? Because you didn't start on a rising Ah, you are, there's no assurances that where you start and where you end are going to be exactly at the beginning of a rising edge. So let's step back a little bit and take a look. So if we have, again, our, uh, our wheel, and what the heck, I'll just do this. And one thing I didn't say is where are you starting and where are you ending and what does a pulse mean? So let's just say going from uh, the transition from light to dark is a rising edge. of a digital pulse. So that means that if I were to start right here, just right before, and I would go all the way around to exactly the same place, I would see exactly 
four rising edges. So I would see that. Would you agree? Yes. Yeah. All right. So just for grins, start. However, in the problem I said you see 20 rising edges of the digital pulse. So just to make this simple, let's say I were to say you see four edges. Four rising edges of a pulse. Notice I didn't say you see the entire pulse. So in that case, what is the best and worst case of what could happen? 10 pi minus the eighth of 10 pi. Well, let's take a look at physically what's going to happen, right? <clears throat> Boy, I'm getting sloppier and sloppier, aren't I? So the best case, or I should say, the shortest case is that I go and I start right here. So this is going to be the shortest. I just go right there, pulse number one, pulse number two, pulse number three, pulse number four, and I stop right there. Correct? Four pulses, but how far have I gone? For all intents and purposes, I could pretty much say you've gone three quarters of the way around, and you've gone, uh, let's see, we have uh, pi 10 centimeters. Would you agree with that? So 7.5 pi centimeters. I just going to leave it in pi because I'm lazy. And in the longest case, what would happen? You start right here. Here's pulse number one, two, three, four, and you stop right here. After going around, Roughly nine eighths of the way around. Correct? Yes, sir. Can't you, if you're talking about just rising edges, could you start another cell back? You would already be high. You wouldn't actually see the rise. You're already high. Just after you get under black. Don't forget what you have done right now is right here is the rising edge, right? Right there is the falling edge. So you're already down. Are oh, you not talking about actually seeing go from falling to rising? I was talking about that line that went from falling to rising. I thought that's what you were talking about. Or are you well, talking about just the elevated? The well, elevated? don't forget, when we talk about rising edge, and we're, that's right, you guys are uh, mechanical, so you may not be all that familiar with clocking in the digital circuits. You've had a lot of analog. So in the world of digital, Usually, your counting circuits are key to a rising or a falling edge. And it really can't detect where you, where you currently are, or it doesn't matter where you currently are. You're just looking for the rising edge or the falling edge, and not the current condition of where you are. And I'm talking with respect to microprocessor counters. So the answer for you is, at this point, well, let's take a look. What will this signal here look like? It is immediately up, down, up, down, up, down, 
and back up. Oh, just on. Up and stop. So you really have what we would consider one, two, just tad over, just a little bit over three, uh, three real pulses. So you really have three, three periods is probably the best way to put it. But it counts for four pulses. Does that make sense? What if you started it, like I think what these guys are saying, what if you started it right after four and you start high, you don't see the edge. You don't see yeah. the rising edge, you're already high. You're already high, so you don't see an edge. So you start right before four. This is just the worst case. Okay, and that's what I'm just, yeah, I was just wondering. Yeah, this will be the worst case. There are all sorts of uh, intermediary cases as well, but this is just the worst case. I think it gets worse though. Well, if you're in the black, you're starting high, you don't see a rising edge. You can go from right after the number four, if you're going clockwise, and go back to your same stop. I, I see what you're saying, and uh, yeah, I will, uh, I will, I will take that. You are correct. Right over there. This is where you start. Oop, right there. I'm not very good at explaining myself. So in this case, yeah, you are at ten eighths, four fifths. So yes, you are right. Very good. I guess we needed a uh, interpreter. <laughs> Are you? You speak the Canada <laughs> very good. And again, it's four fifths pi ten centimeters, which is uh, what are we? Uh, Twelve point five pi centimeters. And this period is going to look like high. Pulse one, pulse two, pulse three, pulse four, and so for all intents and purposes, this is five periods. <clears throat> but for rising edges. So what I would like you to do, oh hold it, not yet. So again, uh, if you look at this, uh, just for grins, somebody calculate this out, how many centimeters is this? Is it 40 yet? And then this one too. The short, longer one is 39.25. And the other one is 23.55. Wow, that's a difference. At least 15, 16 centimeters. for a small little vehicle that has a 10, ten wheel uh, diameter. So, what is the lesson learned from this? So, what, what, say it again? Four tech pulses per revolution doesn't get very good right now. Okay, so here's the problem that I'm going to want you to do right now. If you have a motor encoder, motor, not wheel encoder, That detects uh, or that measures two 
two pulses per revolution. How many of black regions do you need on a wheel encoder to measure the same resolution? Actually, there's no need for us to even pause because this is fairly easy, right? Just think the error right now. Oh, the uh, assumption is uh, 53 to 1 motor to wheel ratio. Fifty-three times two. Yeah, it's just fifty-three times two, right? So you would need one hundred and six black regions on the wheel encoder. So, is that a reasonable design? <laughs> Not. If your wheel is 10 meters tall, 10 meters in diameter. Optical scales. And always going to work right. I want to make this simple, not, not too complex, <laughs> alright? So, one last problem. Uh, we'll have you work on it, talk about it, and then we'll call it uh, a day. But uh, one of you has to present this. So. Your microcontroller. Has measured 307 pulses. No slippage. Assume twenty pulses is equal to one wheel revolution. And let's see. Um, The radius of the wheel is equal to 10 centimeters. What is the range of distances the wheel could have traveled. All right, so let's pause, and one of you will be called forward to do the solution. So, based on the previous problem that we had, where I show this concept, what do you notice about the worst case and best case associated with rotating around here? Ah, so isn't it plus or minus one pulse? Pulse. It's not a rising edge, but it's the entire time for a pulse, which is the period of a pulse. So in this case, if we look at what is going to be our, uh, our actual rotation, you could literally say, hey, 
we're going to be looking at So much paper. That it could have traveled what distance? Whatever we had, some distance. So the long is equal to what you think your distance would be. Plus one twentieth of the circumference. And your short will be equal to whatever you th your distance is minus one twentieth of the circumference. One twentieth meaning the number of pulses that you expected in the entire circumference. So our distance, we said, is going to be three hundred and seven pulses. Keeping in mind that 20 pulses is equal to one circumference, and one circumference is going to be equal to 20 pi centimeters. Remember, I said the uh, radius is 10 centimeters. That's a great way to uh, trick students up on an exam. You all aware of that? Yeah. Is that because I've done that before? Or because other teachers have done that before? Every teacher does that. Every teacher does that? Good. Roughly 307 pi, which is equal to 964.47. But really, the long is going to be 307 pi plus pi, and the short is going to be equal to 307 pi minus pi, 308 pi, 306 pi. 360 or 961.32 centimeters versus 967.61 centimeters. Can you upload these today? Can I upload these today? No, I'm going to keep all of this a secret. Any other questions before we break? Hey, I got a question. For um, for the long one, um, can it doesn't it can it actually get like two basically the distance of two extra pulses? Just one. Why only one? He did Because as we showed here, there's a good question. But Don't you get two extras? You can though. Because you, like, if you start, basically, you would get, you would start just the, just after the leading edge of the black. You would start right here, and you right. already be high. So, you, so you don't count it until you get to the next one. One, and then, two, three, four. But right. So, it's like, say, say, if you went to, to four. Um, the whole idea is we're not measuring extra pulses. How much extra distance are we covering? And the extra distance we're covering is. Strictly speaking, oh, never mind. It would just complete the last pulse all the way. Exactly. Okay, okay. It's from here to here. Right. All right. Good okay. question. That's it. Thank you very much.